Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I wanted to quickly walk through some ways to kind of stay on top of programming trends and technologies without feeling overwhelmed. I feel like each week it seems like there's a new library, new framework, you name it being thrown at us. And it's like, okay, <laughs> how do you like take a step back, learn new skills that when it's appropriate, but not just get so lost in just the sheer volume of everything. My first quick tip is just to focus on areas relevant to your current role or your desired role. And really you just can't learn everything. So prioritize what's most important to you and your career goals. All right, tip number one. Tip number one is to leverage your network. So if you couldn't tell from that intro, I didn't actually crumble out of the earth into my human being. That was AI generated. Uh, it was actually AI generated using a platform called Pika ML. And I never knew about this platform, but luckily I was chatting with my brother yesterday and I was saying that I was exploring video AI generation and he encouraged me to check out this platform. And I think that that's the first recommendation I have is talk to your network, uh, whether that be family, friends, colleagues at work, use, utilize them. I think we have all so much information to share and it's a matter of, I guess, finding ways to um, tap into people that you respect and admire. So in the workplace context, I think that ways that what I think about is even if I have a way of doing something, Maybe I always deploy applications using AWS. I deploy an EC2 instance, and that's just the way I've always done it. Uh, I think it's important for us to be able to step back and talk to a colleague that you respect and ask them, hey, this is how I typically deploy applications. Do you have any uh, recommendations of what you might do? And even if you like are very confident in your way, fresh perspectives are always helpful. And you never know like what new platforms are available that you, you wouldn't learn about unless you ask. So really asking questions like, how would you approach this problem can be very, very helpful. I think like recently, as I kind of mentioned with this AWS EC2 example, uh, I've recently found render.com to be a great platform to deploy my applications and kind of remove some of that DevOps overhead. Uh, and if I just stayed in my lane and never <laughs> asked questions and never explored more, I would never have found this platform. Uh, similarly, like for logging, I found a platform called BetterStack recently through colleagues. I found um, a, a platform called Retool to visualize and build applications up on top of databases that I have, again, from a colleague. Uh, and so network can be so, so valuable, but I think it's important to ask certain questions. So. Uh, yeah, how would you approach this problem? Are there any tools that you found particularly helpful for tasks like this? Asking questions like, are there any libraries that you've seen recently that might help us speed up our workflow? Um, have you attended any interesting tech talks or workshops recently? Anything that can get information out of someone that you think is a particularly good coder and, and might benefit you is definitely a, a very solid approach. Um, that being said, I do want to be cognizant that not everyone has this massive network. Maybe you're just trying to break into tech. Um, if that's where you kind of lie, there is tons of online and in-person workshops and events to check out. Uh, one platform I found helpful is this uh, platform called dev.events you might check out. All sorts of conferences and just dev meetups, as well as like going to meetup.com and seeing if there's anything in your area. Definitely leveraging actual human beings goes a long way. So that is the first tip. Um, on the developer conferences front though, I think that brings us into a second tip that I would recommend for staying on top of programming trends. And that is to watch conference talks. So sometimes conference talks are hard to attend, whether that be for location, you know, family responsibilities, you name it. But I think one thing that's awesome about the developer landscape, at least now, is that most of these conferences, after they're done, the conference talks are posted on a platform like YouTube for free. So for example, I might go to YouTube and look up like PyCon 2024. And as you can see here, there's a whole playlist dedicated to PyCon US 2024. I could look through all of these different videos that are in the 
PyCon conference, and maybe I specifically am working on APIs or something, and I want to see what people are talking about in the API landscape. And as you can see, uh, the design of everyday APIs. There's over four, five, like six. There's tons of conference talks just on APIs alone, and I think that's a great place to start when kind of trying to figure out best practices and what's new in the Python API landscape. I think a couple advantages you have of conference talks is that the people that are giving these talks, they have professional experience in the area that they're talking about and they're passionate about that talk. You don't just sign up and you don't just like give a conference talk on a whim. You have to apply, you have to be very intentional about it. So like you've kind of gone through a filter and the people that are giving these talks, you know, know what they're, they're talking about. And I think furthermore, the organizers of these conferences, uh, they're curating the talks. If there's certain trends in the industry that they wanna focus on and make sure that people are speaking about, they will curate which talks get into the conference and kind of steer that. So they have kind of a good pulse on the landscape, the lay of the land, and things are curated and uh, you know filtered out in these conferences. So a great, great place to look to kind of see what's the latest and greatest in let's say the Python world, but you know there's conferences all over the place. Like I might look up a React conference if I was a front-end developer. As you can see, similarly, a playlist of all sorts of talks from the React conference. There's like a PyTorch conference. Again, playlist of all the videos. I think a recent example that was quite beneficial to me is that I recently posted a video on generating analytics reports in Python I specifically used Quarto to do that. So uh, like when I was learning Quarto, I went to Posit's YouTube channel, went to playlists, and there was this full playlist of Quarto videos. And most of these came from conference talks. And I <laughs> learned so much in a short amount of time. I think I found it much easier than looking through, um, you know, pages and pages of documentation. I'm a visual learner. So hearing just a few conference talks taught me tons and, and gave me further inspiration to what for what, what to learn next. A final kind of third tip I would have for staying on top of the programming trends is to use social media. And I say this like carefully because I think the thing that you don't want to do is just mindlessly scroll on TikTok, Instagram, etc. But you definitely can be intentional about your social media use and that can go a long way. So one place that I love to go to learn about new trends in the programming ecosystem is uh, reddit.com. And, you know, I mostly make Python videos. So, you know, right now I'm trying to like really lock in. My goal is to make a video each week for the rest of the year. And I feel like I need topics to make videos on. So for inspiration for what to make videos on, I might go to the r slash Python thread. I might go and sort by top, and then maybe look at like the past year, just what, what is trending in the Python ecosystem in the past year. Like, oh, this could be a good idea to make a video on like F string tricks. F strings are super, super valuable. And I might just look through this. What else is there for me to look at? What's the coolest things you've done with Python? Might be some cool ideas there. Uh, Python Polar's 1.0 release. So I'm seeing a lot of different things that are relevant NumPy 2.0. Uh, relevant to potentially make videos on. This seems like a quite a good thread. What are your glad to have met you packages? TQDM, uh, Enlighten, Rich. Uh, I've never heard of Rich. So like libraries like that, uh, you might just find something that you never heard about, and uh, I think that. You know, exploring Reddit is a good idea. Like there's other threads too. You don't have to just go programming language specific. I also have found like following the R slash open AI thread has been quite helpful. Similarly, I might, you know, sort by top. Oh gosh. Maybe I'll look by this month. And recently I was doing this and like I stumbled upon uh, the open AI canvas, which was a thing that I was not familiar with and is pretty new to OpenAI and like has this nice interactive kind of code um, canvas feature that I've, you know, is 
is is pretty cool and i wouldn't have known about that unless i followed you know the reddit thread you know and you don't want to you also don't want to fall into the same problem with reddit of like you know just looking at it every single day and never actually programming or, or learning anything but you know maybe once a week once a month you know checking out what's trending is is definitely i think advantageous uh, there's tons of Reddit threads to check out. I will pop up on the screen some ones based on what specialty you are in that you might want to check out. Another idea, if you want to be more intentional with your social media usage, is to follow specifically companies that might be posting papers or research or new tools that are, are you want to be on top of. So like I might follow like Anthropic on Twitter and you know, see what they're posting, what's the new features in Anthropic. I might follow like Google DeepMind on Twitter. And I could even like turn on notifications to just always be up to date on what they're posting. And then you know, you're usually not gonna learn too much from a single post alone, but if they're posting a paper, posting a video on a new tool that they've released, then you're kind of among the first to know about it. I think with any of these recommendations, whether it be leveraging your network, watching conference talks, or you know, being strategic about your social media usage, I think one thing that I really would advise is that you can't learn everything. I would very much advise focusing on the areas and topics that are relevant to your current line of work, or if you're trying to break into tech currently, they are relevant to your desired field of work. So if you wanna work in data science, you know, focus on learning and staying up to date with the current AI tools, Python libraries. You don't need to stay up to date on like new front end frameworks. Just be very strategic and know that you're not gonna learn it all, but you can kind of find ways to stay on top of the topics most relevant to you. The programming world is always evolving and like it is so competitive out there right now. So I do definitely think having ways to stay on top of the changing changing landscape is super important. Obviously, this is not a comprehensive way, list of ways you can stay on top, but I'd be curious to hear other ideas that you all have on how you kind of stay up to date on the programming landscape. Let me know about those in the comments. Yeah, this was just a quick video. I wanna start posting every Saturday. We'll see if I can uh, stick to that, at least for the rest of the year. Um, if you have other video ideas, let me know in the comments. Um, if you like this video, make sure to throw it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, everyone, peace out.